You ever wonder how men determine which women they'll wife and which women they'll take advantage of? It's quite simple actually, we test them. But here's the thing, if you understood exactly what we're testing and how we're testing it, then wouldn't you be able to present yourself as the wife you want to be approached as? That's exactly why on today's show, we're going to discuss how men test you before they respect you so that you never get seen by these men as a woman who can be used and discarded of ever again first way men will test you is smashing we become accustomed to you the woman talking a big game oh I'm not like all the other girls. Oh, this is not going to be easy. Oh, I'm not going to sleep with you on the first night. Once we press you just a little tiny bit, you fold like a cheap lawn chair. They're going to do this in a variety of different ways. It's going to be based off of whatever your trigger points are. So what I mean by that, for example, is if I'm a guy and I go out on a date with you and in the process of me meeting you and getting to know you, I gain an understanding that the best reaction and response I get from you is when I love bomb you. So if I tell you, Oh, you know, you're just so beautiful. You're just so stunning and amazing. You're a dump truck. You're so voluptuous. I just can't believe how much I want to make you my wife. I just can't believe how much I want to make you the mother of my children. I just can't believe how much of a connection we're sharing on this very first date. It feels like I've known you forever. It feels like we've been together forever. It feels like we knew each other in a past life. When he can sense that if he makes you feel like this connection is so deep and so vast and so wide and you just you guys are so close with each other that you'll be persuaded and convinced that you don't need to do all the vetting process you don't need to be patient you don't need to wait for absolutely anything you'll just jump right into it because this is already so deep oh you guys are already connecting on such an intimate level this is already going places that no other relationship in your entire life has ever went it's a catch-22 because even if i date you with the intention of finding a wife but i'm able to get access to you to get access to your squirtle to have pineapples with you on the first date second date very early on what's going to happen is my inclination or uh, what I think of you in terms of how you represent a wife is going to be diminished. Even though I came in with the mindset that I wanted to see if you could be a wife. That's the thing. Guys are actively testing you to see if you're not what they wanted you to be or thought you were. As a man, when I come to the realization that you're easily controlled by me, I don't respect you. I don't respect you at all. And I damn sure don't respect you enough to make you my wife. But I do recognize that the amount of control I have over you will make my life a lot easier because I can utilize you for exactly what I want to utilize you for and discard of you when I don't feel like utilizing you any longer. Number two, let's talk about inconvenience. I'm going to check to see how much you're willing to inconvenience yourself for me. This is very twisted. I'm gauging how much you like me that you will put aside what your needs are, what your wants are, what your desires are what's important to you to be there for me. And the more you inconvenience yourself for me, the more my power grows and the more I'm able to recognize my power. Because as I continue to see you increasingly inconvenience yourself, I realize I have increasing amounts of control over you. And what do I do with that increasing amounts of control? I take advantage of you. Would be an example of, let's say he uh, wants money from you and he knows that you can't say no to him when he asks for money. So one day he says, yo, can I, um, just borrow fifty dollars from you. I just got I just gotta pay for this one thing to to get this down. And uh, you know, I, I want to go to the store and grab this thing from the store, but I need like fifty dollars and I get paid next week. So you give him the fifty dollars. And then another time he comes to you, yo, I'm just trying to I'm trying to cop these new Jordans and these new Jordans come out literally tomorrow and I gotta go wait in the line in order to get them on the first day. But if I don't get them on a the first day, they won't be available. Yo, you think you could just slide me like 250? Like I'm just I'm just about to go get those Jordans, y'all. You know I really wanted those Jordans, some 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 light, you know what I mean? But I don't get paid and I gotta go in the line, I gotta wait tomorrow. And so you slide him 250. And then one day he's talking about I'm trying to get that PS5, yo. I'm yo, that PS5 looking crazy, but yo, you don't got no links on that PS. Yo, you couldn't get me that PS, right? Or he starts asking you, yo, can I 
you think I could borrow your car? I know you got work. Maybe I could borrow your car while you at work and I could just take you to work and I could take your car and I could go drive it somewhere. And slowly but surely, the inconveniences will begin escalating and he's slowly but surely testing, how far are you willing to inconvenience yourself for me? I always tell you all, do nothing for men and they'll actually like you more. Do nothing for men and they'll be more fascinated by you. Do nothing for men and they'll be more interested in you. The moment you start thinking, how am I going to do more for him? How am I going to inconvenience myself more to be with him and show him that I'm the wife for him and I'm the one that he wants to be with? They will only recognize that as you inconveniencing yourself for him and they'll recognize that as the power that they have over you. Number three, let's talk about disappearance. If I'm trying to see how much power I really have, I'm going to disappear on you periodically and see if I'm able to return back with no consequences and resume our relationship as if nothing happened. So for example, uh, a, a disappearing act would be something like, let's say I ask you out on a date, right? And I say, yo, me and you, let's go to the aquarium at 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Yo, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm trying to go to that aquarium. Yo, let's go. Let's do this. And you're so excited, right? Because finally a boy likes you and finally a guy's interested in you and finally a guy's asking you on a date. So you're shivering. You're like, oh my God, you want to go to the aquarium? You want to see dolphins with me? I'm so excited. I, I love dolphins. I, I've always wanted to pet dolphins and, and, and I've always wanted to own a pet dolphin and to go with you would just be so amazing. I'm so excited for Tuesday. What time are we going to go at 2 p.m.? I'm so excited. I'll be there at 1.30 p.m. And then when Tuesday comes, he doesn't say anything to you. And you're sitting, you're literally like this. You're staring at your phone. You're like, I, I think maybe I don't have enough signal. Uh, let, let, let me go outside and see if I have enough signal because I don't think, I, I, I think he must have sent at least three or four messages. And maybe, maybe in the process of him sending his messages, my signal has dimmed to the point where I can't receive messages anymore. Let me go outside and hold my phone to the sun. Maybe, maybe Maybe I'll get the messages because I'm pretty sure he said he wanted to go see dolphins on Tuesday. Why isn't he answering his phone? Is it maybe it's on do not maybe he doesn't have signal either. And then you leave a voice message. Hey, um, I was just, you know, I thought I thought we were going to go see dolphins today. You look like an idiot. He, he comes back. Let's say that was Tuesday. He doesn't mess you all of Tuesday. He comes back on Wednesday and he's like, oh, my bad. I was uh, busy yesterday with family. I just had some family stuff to do. My bad. Uh, maybe we'll go out next week. And you're sitting there like. Oh, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess next week we'll go see some dolphins, I guess, you know, that'll be fine. And you just let him right back in with no consequences for what he just did. After that disappearance, disappearing act he did, he's a magician now. Because if I disappear on you and I am able to come back, there's a good chance you have no self-worth, you have no self-value, and there's a 100% chance I can use you and take advantage of you and I, there's no need to respect you, so I don't respect you because you don't even respect yourself. Number four is withdrawing. Anytime they're not talking to you, anytime they're not texting you or calling you, you get anxious that, oh my God, you're not texting or calling me, you must not like me anymore. Or, oh my God, you're not texting or calling me, you have another girlfriend. They know that that's a way to manipulate you if they sense that the response they get when they withdraw from you is that you begin chasing. And see, the thing about it is, this is a strategy in multiple ways because not only do I get the sense of how much power I have over you and power in this relationship that I can use you, but I also get an understanding, or sorry, I also make my life a lot easier because now if I withdraw from you and you have the response where you're anxiously attached and so you push forward towards me, what's gonna happen in our relationship? You're gonna begin chasing after me. And if you're chasing after me, what are you now? You're the man. Once you establish that dynamic in which, in which he can withdraw from you emotionally and you're going to do all the chasing, well, you're cooked. You're cooked. You're cooked. This is why it's so important to have your own passions and your own hobbies and your own things that you care about outside of boys, outside of boys, outside of boys, outside of boys. I didn't say create hobbies and passions that have to do with boys or have to do with you seeing more boys. You need to have something in your life that keeps you level, that a guy withdrawing from you doesn't make it the end of the world. You're giving Giving people, even partners in your life or potential partners in your life, way too much power when just them taking away their attention from you will set you on a dark spiral. You being a pushover, number five. I know that you think you're being more peaceful and being less confrontational when you forgive people and you give them a second and a third and a fifth and an 85th and a second and a 44th and a 131st chance. When they do mess up, they're going to gauge your reaction to them messing up. And this is part of the test that men do because they want to see how are you going to react when I mistreat you? How are you going to react when I disrespect you? How are you going to react when I don't act how I'm supposed to be acting? Because men might be emotionally stunted. They're not stupid though. If your response is to let things go, 
if your response is to allow things to pass, if your response is to be non-confrontational, what that's going to communicate to me is that you're a pushover. What that's going to communicate to me is that I don't actually need to be worried about if I do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing because you're going to forgive me anyways. And he cannot respect you if he doesn't face consequences for his actions. How possibly could he? He has to respect your authority, your viewpoint, your opinions, right? Who you are, your feelings, what you want, what you desire. If he doesn't respect that or think that it even matters, how, what, why, why, why would you matter to him? Why, why, why does anything matter? Number six is very interesting. Last minute. Guys want to see if you will accept last minute plans and hangouts, because if you will accept a whole bunch of last minute, unplanned, unscheduled hangouts. What that tells me is I can exist in a relationship, in a situationship, in a whatever ship with you in a very low quality form that doesn't require a lot of effort or planning on my part. Let's say, you know, he's going to the club and, you know, he goes out to the club and after the club, he always contacts you like steady. Like he's like, yo, 2 a.m. comes, he's at the club. Whether or not you go out, he'll call you or he'll text you, be like, yo, what are you up to or what are you doing? Or what are you saying right now? I might, I'm trying to come pull up on you. Or can you, you want to come pull up on me? And he hits you up, you know, after he goes out or when he's finished doing what he was doing. And then he comes hit you up to hang out day of or to hang out right now or to hang out in the next couple of hours when he just got free because he was too lazy to ever plan anything or schedule anything with you. But the realization that he comes up upon when you are available last minute is that you really don't have anything that is important enough in your life that you would actually not be able to just drop it and be with me. I won't have respect for you that way because you don't even respect your own life and priorities enough to say to yourself, yeah, I'm not answering your calls at 2 a.m. I got to do stuff. Yeah, I don't care how much you want to spend time with me right now this second. I'm not available right now this second. And I wouldn't even try to make myself available to you right this second because I have much better things to do with my time. And if you really, really, truly want to be around me, be with me, spend time with me, you will call me or you, sorry, you call me. You will schedule with me the time and the place in the future in which you want to see me. Do you want to be DoorDash? Yes or no? Because... If you're poof available to him whenever he needs you to be available, you're just like DoorDash. You don't open up the DoorDash app unless you want food right now and you want it quick, fast and in a hurry under 40 minutes probably. So don't be acting like DoorDash if you don't want to get treated like DoorDash. He only going to open your contact information on his phone when he's hungry for some food, i.e. some Squirtle. Because I guarantee you, whenever you're not hungry, you're not thinking about that opening up that DoorDash app. Same thing for the guys. They ain't thinking about contacting you. When they're not hungry, when they're not aged up, you should know what I mean by aged up. My advice to you would always to be if a guy really wants to see you, put him in a position where he has to plan and schedule to see you because that takes way more work, effort and commitment than it does to just text you as soon as he's available and expect you to be free. The point I want to make is control the emotional control and manipulation that guys will put you through to see how vulnerable or weak you are. Because if I see that a slight thing that I do or say can really get you up or down, get you yelling, get you screaming, get you out of character, going crazy. What that tells me is that I can control you. Once again, he realizes how much power he has over you. And he realizes that why do I need to respect you when I am in control of you? There's no reason for me to respect you. You do what I want, when I want, when I want you to do it, how I want you to do it. It becomes very easy for them to trigger you when it's convenient for them to trigger you, knowing that your response will stop you from being able to be rational or logical about a situation. And you want to know how it works in a guy's favor? Because if I know that you're easily triggered by things I say and do, well, then think about it. If you're mad at me or upset with me, then I also know how to trigger you in a way where let's say you're upset that um, I was cheating on you with this other girl, but I know that I can really easily emotionally manipulate you. I can come to you after cheating on you with another girl and tell you, yo, I just, I just, I just, it, I've been struggling with, with, with me and you and, and we don't, we don't hang out as much as I'm used to us hanging out. And you know, my, 
my mother, she's been going through some things and I just, I haven't really, I haven't really been myself lately and you've been working so much and while you were working, it just, I just felt so lonely that, you know, I just felt a little bit of comfort in one of my friends, my friends and when we were talking, it just, one thing led to another, another and I wasn't even trying to sleep with her, I was just thinking about you the whole time. I would He's going to take you to a place where you're thinking to yourself, oh my god. It's my fault. Oh my God, you poor thing. And it becomes so much harder for you to be rational and logical about anything that's happening in the relationship when all you're thinking about is how overwhelming your emotions are at that time. This is why I always advise you guys, like when we, this is why we talk about emotions so much on the show, not just the emotions of the guys and how to utilize that to your advantage, but also your own emotions and not how to not feel things, but how to control your emotions in a way where you can feel them without them being overwhelming and without them pushing you to make decisions that you know you shouldn't be making or that don't benefit you. Because emotions are the easiest ways to start making decisions that actually actively make your life worse.